Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video we're gonna talk about Nathan Diasha. So Nathan Diasha had a very successful 2021. He won his ninth pro show this year, actually last year, and this year he was supposed to compete at the Arnold. Very unfortunately, he pulled out of this show, and the reason is actually a bicep tear. It wasn't a big tear, it was a rather small one, but still, he didn't want to take the chance, so he had a surgery, and of course, he wasn't able to continue the prep, he had to recover. And somewhere around that time, his sponsorship by Hostile Supplements ended. So, some people assumed, let's say there's a rumor, that the reason why Hostile dropped Nathan is because he got injured and he wasn't able to compete at the Arnold. Also, Nathan didn't compete at the Mr. Olympia for quite a while. He was supposed to compete last year, he didn't make it, he had some, maybe a lot of legal issues, he wasn't able to get to the United States in quite a while, and Hostile Supplements is uh, only United States based, so there really wasn't a lot of sense keeping Nathan Diasha on the team. But we didn't really hear this from Fuad, we heard this from other people on YouTube. So let's hear what Fuad actually has to say on this topic. I wanted, I wanted to, to, to discuss the Nathan situation because <clears throat> I think a bunch of people are, are misinformed, misinformed yeah. about Nathan. So... so do you guys get paid from your supplement companies? Yes. You guys get a salary, correct? Yes. Is it is it a livable salary? Absolutely. I would assume it. both James and I from our contracts are making above six figures. I'll make it very clear to everybody now so that people don't listen to, to dumb people who don't know what they're talking about. Nathan, had he stayed the full year, would have made over six figures. Yeah. Nathan's contract was not based on commission. Nathan's contract had a commission clause in it, as does ian's as does james as does romans yeah. that's what that's just part of measuring the value part of measuring the value of an athlete that's sponsored but the other thing i want to make clear is when i said we had no bad blood and he was a friend of mine i was 100 percent honest he's still a friend of mine when he signed with yamamoto i was mm -hmm. truly happy I just want people to understand that just because somebody leaves a company or whatever it doesn't always mean that there's drama or bullshit sometimes it just literally just works best for both parties when people ask why it's better they always want to, they always want to know the specific reason so with nathan it was i thought everything was great it just wasn't working out for us uh, as a whole and it wasn't working out for him as a whole like the he wasn't being completely fulfilled and neither were we so we thought it was best for both parties and that's all there is to it all right, so now you know exactly why this happened. <laughs> Not really, he don't. I mean, he didn't really say anything specific. He just said that his contract wasn't commission-based and that he was receiving a salary. And it was interesting when I heard that uh, Ian and James are making over six figures a year and uh, that Nathan would be making that much if he stayed with, with Hostile for a full year. But for some reason, I'm not really sure what, I mean, he said people want specifics, but he didn't really go into specific details. For some reason, it didn't work out for either of these two guys. It didn't work out for Nathan, it didn't work out for Hostile Supplements, for Fuad, and they parted ways. They stayed friends, as, as, as uh, Fuad says, but no, they are not working together anymore. And Nathan went back to have a motto. He was sponsored by them a while ago, and they are a huge company. They are sponsoring some really high profile names like Rolly Winkler, Flex Lewis. So it worked out for, for both of them, I guess. And uh, is it really the reason that Nathan didn't go to US, that he got injured and he wasn't able to do the Arnold? Um, he didn't really go to specifics, Fuad, unfortunately, so sorry guys uh, if you were expecting that, but uh, he, he said something, and you can get the idea, what was going on, what is basically the reason, and, I'm, and I can assume uh, that's a pretty safe assumption that the reason is actually that, Nathan not being uh, just active enough, not doing what Fuad expected him to do for the company, and maybe he wasn't paid enough, Maybe that's the part that Nathan wasn't happy about. He probably wasn't getting as much as he wanted to get. So maybe that's why he went with Yamamoto, a larger company that might be paying him more. I don't know. So still, we don't really know the specifics, but we know a little bit more than we did before this podcast. So there you go, guys.
All right, next we have an update of actually another hostile supplement athlete, and this is Samson Dauda, who is looking, who is looking dry right now, which is not usual for black guys. As James Hollins has says, uh, black guys they have the shape, they have the roundness, but the Caucasian guys they have the dryness. He says Caucasian dry, and Samson is kind of having both right now. So he does have that that shape, you know, the round, bubbly muscle, 3D looking muscle. And now he's starting to get really freaking dry, especially those quads. But also the chest, the abs, everything really, but especially the quads. Look at the quads now when he flexes them. They are looking extra, extra dry. I mean, the, 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 the skin looks so thin. But like overall, this guy, he looks... He's definitely gonna be at his best at this show, like, I don't know what changes did he implement in this prep, but this is definitely gonna be his best. He does have some weaknesses, as you can see the lats from the front are sort of lagging behind, uh, also like, he could just have more mass in the entire upper body, at the back, the, the arms, the delts, chest, not really, he has a great chest, take a look at his chest right here, it's a good chest right like the entire legs from front and behind they're good chest is pretty good um, delts and 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 back that's where he can uh, work on a little bit not a lot not a lot so like over the over the course of a couple of years maybe he's gonna be he's gonna be like a serious threat to the, like the top six as a mr olympia if everything goes well if he keeps uh, progressing at this rate so, uh, back also, it, it's pretty shallow, I mean, compared to, like, his legs and, and his chest, it, it's, it's a little behind, so he needs to work on that, but it's not really bad, you know, I mean, if you compare him, like, to, to, to Brandon Curry, who you're gonna see in a moment, he's not close, like, no, no way he can, like, beat Brandon and win the, win the Arnold, no, no, even though he, he has good legs, I still think Brandon has probably, like, uh, similar legs as far as size, but Brandon also has a really freaking massive upper body. And this guy he has a great potential to get to that level if everything goes well. If he can actually, if he, if he hasn't really reached the genetic ceiling as far as uh, muscularity in the upper body. But if there is more room to grow and if he actually does grow, if he adds more tissue, he can actually be a really freaking impressive bodybuilder. Some people are comparing him to Flex Wheeler. He does have an aesthetic shape, like... Uh, not right here in that in that transition, but right now you can see that he has a really small waist, wide shoulders, um, round and big legs. So it's it's a really aesthetic physique for a bodybuilder, for an open bodybuilder. So he is coached by Milo Sharchev, and in three weeks we will see how will he do at the Arnold Classic. My prediction: if he's peeled out of his mind, top five, top six. All right, here's a guy that uh, is sort of a talk of many people, and a lot of people have him like in top three, even in the Arnold Classic. I mean, he did win the Indy Pro, and he was eighth place at the Mr. Olympia. He was fourth at last year's Arnold Classic, so it's it's reasonable to expect him to do well. And during his off season, before this Arnold Classic, I mean, it was a short off season between the Mr. Olympia and now, but he did seem like he grew, like he added more tissue. But now that he lost all the fat and water, you can see that he pretty much looks the same. And that's pretty much expected. Like, how much a real muscle tissue can you make in 2-3 months between shows? Not a lot. We'll see how much. Because he is really heavy. Right now he's 272, fasted after 10 hours of sleep. Wow, he's sleeping a lot <laughs> at this phase uh, at the prep, which is rare. 3 weeks out, actually less. 21 days, 19 actually days out, he's uh, he's sleeping 10 hours a night, that's, that's impressive, honestly, I don't know if he's using any sleep meds, but still, 10 hours, that, that's crazy, he's probably still eating a lot, and that's why he can sleep, and he did 45 minutes of cardio, and then he took these photos fasted, so he's uh, not as big as he would if he was full, but he also says that the day before this photo was taken, it was a high carb day, so he wasn't exactly super flat, it wasn't like after 5 days of zero carb, uh, he, he filled up, he carved up the day before he took this photo, so he probably looks, you know, as hard and as lean, and after sleeping, your, your skin gets thin, you, you look sharpest in the morning, and if you had carbs the day before, you look good. So uh, his problem is the tricep, and uh, if he doesn't put it, like, if he doesn't press it against his body like he does in the side chest, 
Uh, it doesn't look good, as you can see in the side, uh, in the side uh, relax or a quarter turn pose. His triceps are be pretty much non-existent. I don't know if he tore them. I mean, they are both very flat, so it's probably just genetic. But like, they are seriously flat. Although his conditioning is really coming along. And again, his weight, 272 for somebody who is not tall. I mean, he's like, I don't know, 5'7", 5'7", 8", something like that. You know, he's not a super tall guy. So he is really freaking heavy. And this tells us that he's probably gonna look bigger compared against the other guys. We're gonna find out in, in 19 days, as he says... Uh, can he be the runner-up? Of course, the first spot is reserved for Brandon Curry. Take a look at this guy's legs right now. I mean, actually, try not to look at his legs. Instead, focus on his on his uh, head or his upper body, and then try to notice that uh, this balance is definitely smaller this time around. His legs. If you look at the center of his physique right here. You won't see a crazy asymmetry. You're gonna see the like pretty balanced legs, right? I don't know. Maybe this is just an illusion. Maybe he got a good pump. Maybe it's an angle. Maybe it's good lighting. I don't know. It's still not on stage. But at least in this photo, he does look improved. Especially the legs. What is the reason to this? It's probably because his prep was going smoothly. So he says... Here's another screenshot uh, taken from a clearer video with better light. This was taken the same day as the video that I posted a few days ago was filmed. This prep has honestly been the least stressful prep I've had in a long time. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that uh, things are running smoothly for Brandon and it seems like he's improving. I mean, this physique looks absolutely ridiculous. You guys gotta remember, he won the Mr. Olympia and he won the Arnold Classic before. This guy is one of the one of the few people who won the Mr. Olympia. Arguably one of the worst Mr. Olympias ever, but still a Mr. Olympia. That doesn't happen <laughs> by accident. That that's really freaking tough to accomplish. And it seems like he's improving. He keeps on improving. I don't know how, but there are no weaknesses of him um, losing anything. He is not a young guy. As you can see, his beard is showing that. But his, his body is just getting better and better every time, every year, year after year. Here's another photo, and this one looks really freaking impressive. Uh, this is actually flat, like in the morning, on empty stomach, after cardio. Can you imagine being <laughs> looking like this while being freaking flat? Like, he looks like he can't be fuller. He, he looks like he has an arm, delt, and, and chest pump. Right? I mean, this is just a, a monster. This guy, his upper body, uh, if he had matching legs, he would be one of the best Mr. Olympias ever. I mean, just his upper body, it reminds me quite a bit of, like, Ronnie Coleman. And it's comparable to Phil Heath. So as far as simply just upper body, if you talk about the fullness, the shape, the crazy, crazy roundness, you know, he's like up there, right? I don't want to put a number on it to say that he's like top three best upper bodies of all time, but he's up there. He's really freaking impressive. And now it seems like his legs grew. And even in this photo, he's not showing legs, but you can see the size of his legs in these in this fat pants. He does look improved in that area. It looks like he grew some muscle. We'll see. We'll see in three weeks on stage. I hope he actually did. But honestly, he always made improvements from, from show to show. So we'll see what's going to happen at this Arnold. At this point, I feel like it's going to be an easy win for Brandon. But whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more stuff like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much guys for watching. All the best and bye-bye.